Good everyone. I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today I'll be starting uh, a new series on the Aura component. It's a part of a Platform Developer 2 series, but um, I'm not going to deal with Visual Force anymore. <clears throat> now, you must be wondering, right, why this guy didn't do any kind of a hands-on on Visual Force, right? The reason why I didn't do hands-on, right, because I have an expectation, right? If you are planning to take Platform Developer 2, you should know how to code in Visual Force. And I have covered that, uh, you know, coding around Visual Force when I was teaching Platform Developer 1. If you want it, you can check it out. It's free. It's available in the, um, on a YouTube, so on a playlist. So, you know, you're welcome to check that out. Uh, that being said, right, with Aura components, a little bit different, right? I will do hands-on. The reason why I wanted to do hands-on, uh, because although I must say that uh, LWC, is the is a new you know nice and you know shiny um, you know programming uh, stuff out there, you know a framework out there, uh, and Salesforce encourages you to use LWC as much as you can, but there are certain limitations which LWC can do, and I will talk about it one specifically today, and I'll just you know so that gets you excited why you need to you know study Aura right because Aura component is a pretty amazing. Uh, um, you know, you know, set of components, right? Or in other words, uh, now, okay, now you must be wondering, right? If you if you never heard about Aura, right? You must be wondering what the heck is Aura component, right? What the heck is that Aura framework to begin with? Okay, so when we when we talk about you know Aura, uh, you know, in general about you know Aura component programming model, that's the way the Salesforce mention it, right? So why do we use it? Okay, the first question. Okay, and why do you have to learn this, right? Because since Salesforce is talking about moving people to LWC. Okay, so first of all, Aura, you know, it has a lot of advantage. First of all, you get a lot of out of box set of components, which has been proven, tested, and works pretty well on Lightning side of things. Okay, and it, it supports even driven architecture, right? It's a component model based, right? When you when you are on Visual Force page, it's a page center, right? It's not really a component based architecture there, right? So, and you know, as you know that you know in Visual Force page, it's mostly since it's a page centric. So any request you make, so it has to go and hit the server first and get the response back. That's not the case uh, in case of the Aura or Lightning component, right? Since it's a component or app model based uh, technology, uh, L, you know the JavaScript uh, on the client will take care of most of the stuff for you. Unless you wanted to save something, uh, you know it will not hit the server. Okay. And this framework is pretty much optimized for lightning performance. So, like I said, you know uh, the the few advantage I can I can think about out of box components and which is tested, and you know it has a rich you know custom component ecosystem. You know to be honest, a lot of things you can do with that, a lot of components you can build using Aura component, and and your development is much faster compared to the Visual Force, and. Uh, it supports uh, cross browser browser, sorry, cross browser compatibility, right? So that's built in place. So that's pretty awesome, right? It's, it's mobile already, so which is fantastic, right? Okay, now one thing I just wanted to uh, you know uh, tell you, right? Uh, you know when you talk about Aura component, I'll just show you how to create an Aura component, just the basic. But in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to build it, you know, you know, UI interface and, you know, some JavaScript code, right? So the next episode is all about, right? So stay tuned for that. But for now, just, you know, understand that when you build um, uh, an Aura component, right? So you will get HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you know, all of the code. I'll show you just in a second how to do that. Um, so, and what that will do, right? So it will help you create your app with a sophisticated UI, right? User interface. Um, so, and also one thing you have to understand, right? The component details, right? Uh, in other words, implementation of the components, right? They're pretty in encapsulated. So, so what that will do is that you don't have to worry about underlying stuff. So you just, you know, worry about, you know, how to work on what you wanted to do. So that's the advantage. That's all good, right? But the first and the most important thing you have to understand, right? If you wanted to work on an Aura component, you have to enable my domain. 
Okay, without that, you can't do that. That's one of the prerequisites. So if you're logged into org, I'm pretty sure you know how to, to do that, but I'm just going to show you anyways. Okay, so you are in this um, uh, setup page, right? If you don't know how to go to setup, um, so you go to this Gecog icon, um, you know, the setup, and you just search for my domain, and, you know, it just comes under my domain. You know, if it's not enabled, you should enable it. So mine, you know, because company, that's my domain, you know. So, you know, if, if you don't see this, you need to make it. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay. So that's one of the prerequisites you should keep into consideration, right? It's very important. Okay. Now, from a development perspective, right, you can use Visual Studio Code, which is the nicest way to do so. Or you can do, if you don't have access to uh, Visual uh, Studio Code, at times what happens, right, um, you might get uh, alerted. So, you know, if, if you're working in a company, right, uh, where you follow a, you know, hardcore, you know, uh, uh, CICD concept, and if you follow the Salesforce DX, then you can't use, you know, this stuff, uh, developer console. Right, it's better to develop using Visual Studio Code, and then once you do it, it's better to deploy to your, you know, uh, GitHub or Azure or, or AWS, and in a pipeline, whatever you do, right, wherever your repository is all about, right. So you push it there, the pipeline kicks in and it deploys to wherever it's supposed to deploy, right. So in that perspective, right, developing using Visual Studio Code is, is a better option. I prefer uh, you should take it as a first option. To develop using Visual Studio Code, Developer Console should only be used in an exceptional scenario. But I'll show you anyways because it's a demo thing. But if you wanted to, you know, if you're building on a scratch org, right, you can do it here and then get the code to your scratch org and then deploy it, right? It's, it's your choice, right, which works for you. Um, but just from my perspective, I pretty much like to do everything in a Visual Studio Code uh, or when I build a commercial app, right? Okay, so enough of ranting, enough of talking, enough of garbage. You must be thinking, right, this guy been blah, 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 blah for, but, you know, that's important, guys. You know, just wanted to, you know, get across, get you guys across the concept. Okay, so, um, so this is um, um, a, so let me take you to the developer console. So you go here, the Gecko icon, so go to developer console. Um, so one of the, 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 the drawback of using developer console, right? So you can't um, use uh, this to build LWC. It's not supported. You have to use Visual Studio Code no matter what, right? Okay, so let's go to file and you're gonna do new. So you see you can do Apex class, Apex trigger, but there is no option for to build um, you know, LWC. So when you when you see Lightning application, right? When you see uh, Lightning component, you must be thinking, ah, this must be LWC. It's not LWC. It's an Aura framework. So let's go to Lightning component. Um, so we'll say, I'm just gonna put a demo or test, right? Test component, right? And you know, this options give you if you wanted to. I have this option, I have this component available on Lightning uh, page, uh, Lightning uh, tab, or Lightning rec uh, record page, or experience uh, builder side page, or Lightning quick action. So for now, I'll just keep it to Lightning page, right? When you click on submit and see what happens, so it all automatically gives you that in a code interface where you start building it, and these are the Im interfaces it implements it. If you remember, based on the the tick box option. So if you're not very comfortable using Visual Studio Core, right, to build this option, you can always build it here in your scratch org, right? And then get these changes to your Visual Studio Core, right? Then you can start working on. So like I said, whichever way works for you, right? So and this is not a scratch org by the way. This is my developer org. I mean you can get it for free, right? But and you see these are the components. Uh sorry, these are the um extra stuff that get created. So this is a component. So which is this, and then you have a controller class, right? So this is a controller where you write your code uh, around your, uh, you know, controller action, like for instance, you know, on click or submit, right? All the JavaScript code you write here. Or if you wanted to, you know, use a helper class so that you don't duplicate, you can write it under helper, right? This talks about the style, right? It's, you know, if you wanted to put a style, right? CSS, you can do that here. 
uh, documentation if you wanted to mention that. Uh, this is render, this is design, this is SVG. So these are the things that, you know, comes with the bundle, right? It's an app bundle, what I would say. And, you know, this is pretty flexible. You can start writing it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is just uh, an introduction which I wanted to talk about. So in the next episode, we're going to build the actual stuff, right? Because I wanted to do the hands-on, and I'm pretty sure you guys are excited for that. And, you know, so... Let's dive into it next time. So till then, adios.